Thank you for clicking this video. It's now time to sit back as I review Ready Player One, like a week late. Ready Player One is a 2018 American science fiction adventure film directed by Steven Spielberg with a screenplay by Zach Penn and Ernest Cline, based on Cline's 2011 novel of the same name. When the creator of a virtual reality world called the Oasis dies, he releases a video in which he challenges all Oasis users to find his Easter egg, which will give the finder his fortune. This film has got to be, without a doubt, the biggest and best visual experience of Spielberg's career. I can honestly say I have never seen effects like this in my life. Seamless doesn't even begin to describe how good they were, and it's not just everything that makes up the Oasis. It's how they combine reality and the Oasis and have so many aspects that interconnect. We have real-life film clips taking place inside the Oasis with virtual characters, and yet, as a whole, it works magnificently in a way I have never seen before. Even when in the real world we see holograms being used that didn't look like special effects, it genuinely looked like these were real holograms. I believed everything they were delivering! The level of detail that is put into every minute of this film is extraordinary and is on a level that, much like the Oasis, is out of this world. On top of that, it had possibly the most well-blended editing I've ever come across. The amount of pop culture references in this film far exceeded anything I expected. You think it's going to be a few moments here and there, but no, 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 no. Every ounce of this film is saturated in pop culture, and I'm talking about references going back to the 1940s with movies like 1941's Citizen Kane. I feel I have to mention this because there are a lot of young folks who are going to be watching this film and are not going to understand that Rosebud reference. Those references aren't all willy-nilly. The plot does allow them to make sense. The film establishes that the creator of the Oasis had a deep love of pop culture and movies and so he included those loves into the world he created. Makes perfect sense to me. But I could watch this film 1000 times and still not be able to pinpoint every single reference in it, but I will mention a couple of my favourites. The moment that sold me on this film can be summed up with one word. I love the original Thundercats, and when I saw Wade's avatar with a Thundercats belt, I just around died and went to heaven. This was followed by other favourites such as He-Man and even the Rocky Horror Picture Show. But believe me now, if on a second viewing I don't see a She-Ra reference, I'm going to be pretty damn pissed. I love when movies reference other movies, so these references gave me life! Not to mention this film is a geek's greatest fantasy come to life. There is nothing like it anywhere. So often I can watch a film and say, oh this reminds me of so and so, but not with this. Yes, it intentionally brings up other films, but it's not doing so in an attempt to copy them. If anything, Ready Player One is the ultimate tribute to the entertainment industry. I watched this film in 2D and was blown away by the visuals, like blown out of my seat with how terrific they were, and now I can't help but think, wow, what would it be like in 3D? And I'm seriously tempted to go back and find out. Now, there were some minor things I didn't enjoy. I do feel the overall plot was just a tad off balance. When it comes to the goal of the game and the goal of the bad guys, it felt for me just a bit disjointed. For starters, we have a villain who isn't that threatening or intimidating and is only a villain because he has so many people at his disposal and runs a massive corporation. But what's worse is he doesn't even like the very thing he's fighting to control. His agenda just doesn't feel right. He sometimes comes off as those old school villains who are incompetent morons who easily get taken down by a bunch of kids. Oh wait, that's exactly what he is! He comes off as weak and a real douchebag. I hated TJ Miller's character, Irock. All his lines are designed to be comedic, and while everyone else's comedy feels right and is delivered well, Miller's character's comedy feels painfully over the top and far too forced to the point I really wanted him to shut up. The love story that goes on between Wade, played by Ty Sheridan, and Samantha, played by Olivia Cook, I didn't enjoy either. It felt rushed and didn't feel organic. They hadn't had many interactions when already I Love You was getting thrown around. It didn't work for me. It was a very dull love story that kind of popped up out of nowhere. Another issue I had is that our lead character, Wade, I found him sometimes too hard to root for. There is a moment where he literally loses everything he has left in the real world, and two seconds later he is as happy as a pig in mud, hitting on his new girlfriend and admiring views because who cares if a bunch of people just got killed, I still got my game and now I got this chick. 
That genuinely bugged me. It's hard to root for someone who doesn't seem to care much about the real world people live in, especially when the film is talking about a virtual reality being used to hurt people in the real world. But back to the pros. I could go on about the visuals because did I mention they were out of this world fantastic? Well, aside from that, Ready Player One has now established itself as having my new number one favorite film track. The song choices were everything you could ever hope for. Songs from every era make an appearance in this film and I could listen to them for days. This is usually the part where I would go out and get the soundtrack but I honestly already own every song that was featured in this film and I stand by the fact that these were brilliant choices that capture not only the essence of the film in its entirety but the nature of Oasis too. I don't think the performances of our actors were Oscar worthy, but they sure as hell sold this film to the audience. They had me believing this world was real and that even I could go there and oh my god I want to so badly. There are going to be people out there who hate this, that happens with all films, but this film is also going to make a mark in cinema history for years to come. Not because of the story it tells, but because of the level of artistry in what was presented on the screen and the amount of work that went into including so much of cinema's past into this film. Some have said it overdoes it on the pop culture aspects, I say good on them! It, as I said before, is the ultimate tribute to so many films and characters that have come before and paved the way for more incredible films and characters in the future. Thank you so much for watching this review. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Until next time, bye!